By now, you're well aware of the updates that have happened this week in the AI world, and I have not been getting excited about AI for a long time. I've kind of been in my bubble, but this week deserves a special mention. First, we had OpenAI troll Google before their Google Developers Day with some pretty incredible features. And I'm going to dive into the chat GPT dashboards. I've, I've been playing in there again and seen some really incredible stuff in just a moment. But also I've been updating my workflows. And as I was updating my blog post workflow that include, includes perplexity, I realized that perplexity made a drop this week as well. And nobody has been talking about it at all. So they've updated their models now as well to include a few extra models like Llama 3 from Meta and also Mixtral 8. There And then there's they've got their sonar models in here as well. Now, if you're using make.com to run automations like I do, then I'll definitely consider updating all of your models this week pretty much. But if you are using Perplexity, I found that using sonar medium chat is best for doing any research type of steps. And I'm actually finding Llama 3 to be the better copywriter out of all of these models that I've tried so far. However, I would say this about Llama 3 is that it's kind of an in-between of a, like a ChatGPT 3.5 to ChatGPT 4. It's kind of sits somewhere in between there in terms of how it writes. So it's not the best one to write with, but if you want to use Perplexity only for some reason and you don't want to use OpenAI or Claude, then I would consider testing Llama 3 for your use cases. But like I said, for any research steps, we're using Sonar Medium Chat. If you are using the content repurposing system in my workflows, then I would encourage you to go in and not just update Perplexity, but we're now updating our OpenAI modules the G to the GPT-40 system. Now, the other reason that I wanted to pull this up is because I, as I tested the new model, I found out that some of the prompts that I was using for the model GPT-4 is no longer working for GPT-4.0. So for example, for the outline prompt, in the old prompt, we had an extra a sentence at the end of this prompt that said, you must begin the outline with two hashtags for a H2 format with ATX. For some reason, this also created confusion for GPT-4.0. So we once we removed that particular line, then it started to run perfectly. There's something that's happened where either we wrote prompts for the old model because it couldn't understand what we were trying to get at. So we had to have some extra sentences in there to give it enough context. Whereas now I think it picks up the context way better, which means typically it's, it's meaning that less in our prompts is actually the best. Someone did put out a paper recently about prompting and they came to the same conclusion that most prompts, if possible, should actually only be a couple of sentences, no more. Now, I definitely have longer prompts here and a lot of variables, but they do work when it comes in, into automations like these. So there's more about perplexity here as well. So talking about the Sonar models, and then we've got the Llama 3 models here, the different context lengths and stuff. You can find that easily in the perplexity documentation. Now, I'm not going to dive into everything that's happened with OpenAI announcements this week and Google announcements. You've probably seen those everywhere, but they have been impressive. First, with OpenAI, we're getting very close to the movie Her, where the conversation back and forth with the AI is becoming scarily real. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people out there that are just getting closer and closer to having a full-time AI girlfriend, that is for sure. But the, the one part that did impress me, and I've talked mostly about content creation, but the one part did impress me about Google is their notebook LM and how they can now turn notes from notebook into a podcast that is interactive where you can ask questions. Check this out. So here we are in Notebook LM. You can load it up with all the materials here on the left. In this notebook, I've been using it with my younger son, and I've added some of his science worksheets, a few slide decks from his teacher, and even an open source textbook full of charts and diagrams. With 1.5 Pro, it instantly creates this notebook guide with a helpful summary and can generate a study guide, an FAQ, or even quizzes. But for my son, Jimmy, he really learns best when he can listen to something. So we've prototyped a new feature with Gemini, and it's called Audio Overviews. Notebook LM is going to take all the materials on the left as input and output them into a lively science discussion personalized for him. Let's take a listen. So let's, uh, let's dive into physics. What's on deck for today? Well, uh, we're starting with the basics, force and motion. 
Okay. And that, of course, means we have to talk about Sir Isaac Newton and his three laws of motion. Ah, uh, yes, the foundation for understanding how objects move and interact. Ah, uh, yes, this is where multimodal really shines. Now, it generated this audio discussion based on that text material. And what's amazing is that my son and I can join into the conversation and steer it whichever direction we want. When I tap, join. Hold on, we have a question. What's up, Josh? Yeah, can you give my son Jimmy a basketball example? Hey, Jimmy, that's a fantastic idea. Basketball is actually a great way to visualize force and motion. Let's break it down. Okay, so first, imagine a basketball just sitting there on the court. It's not moving, right? That's because all the forces acting on it are balanced. The downward pull of grab. Pretty cool, right? And the reason why I love this is because what I'm passionate about besides business and AI and marketing is also how are the next generation going to learn? I absolutely hated school. I could have done way better in school. Every single report card said if Mitch just applied himself, he could get way better marks. And it was totally true, but I didn't apply myself because I hated it because I knew everything in there was outdated and because the teachers just didn't really care about their jobs enough. There's no passion. They didn't transfer their passion from themselves to the students. So we had no real chance at all. But if a kid can have technology like Notebook LM, where I can actually ask questions, get answers for, for those questions based on your passion. So like the example, if you're into basketball, it gives you a basketball example. And you can continue to prompt it that way. We are in the age of technology now. And I'm so excited about it. Our kids will be smarter than adults by the time they're eight, nine, 10 years old if we can lean into this technology into the right way. Now, of course, we have to be safe. We have to make sure that they're not going to get caught up in all of the other things that come along with technology. But if we can raise them in a safe way using technology in the right way, then the world is going to transform beyond anything that us delusional adults could even imagine. Now on to ChatGPT and another update from OpenAI that has kind of snuck under the radar a little bit is the quality of their images that is getting produced inside ChatGPT. So this is different to DALL-E 3 and inside the API when we're running our workflows. Inside the dashboard is new and improved. For example, I did this very basic prompt about Google versus OpenAI and this was the image it gave me first. I have no other threads open, this was it. So it blows my mind how good that is immediately. Now, it didn't get the OpenAI logo, but it did get the Google logo correct, which is kind of embarrassing for an OpenAI technology. But beside the point, all I needed to do was throw a logo over the top of that A there for OpenAI, and we were good to go for this particular video. So that's just one big improvement. Now, hopefully they'll bring that into the API so we can take advantage of that from our particular workload as well. But I think that's gonna happen much further along in the future. So then I thought I'd ask it for some clickbait video titles to go along with that. And unfortunately, when it comes to writing headlines, OpenAI is the worst at it. It just insists on always putting this colon into 90% of the headlines that it creates. And before this, nobody ever wrote headlines with a, a, a colon inside of it. So I don't know why it continues to do this, but when I'm writing video titles or titles for anything that for that matter right now claude is above and beyond any of the other models that is definitely for sure but the other interesting thing that i saw when i first logged in and it's not here today but it said create me a website so it got me curious and i clicked the button once and i didn't tell it a single thing and it created me a website and then created me a html file and i said okay well what do i do with this it told me to then save it into a text edit save it as a html file and then have a look at it locally and look, it's not that impressive if you compare it to a website that we can build today. But for me to click one button and then for it to produce this website with a header with a main section and then a little about me and contact me section in a form, that's kind of impressive. It literally took me less than one second to click the button to get this. I didn't write any of the copy or nothing. I've got no idea where it got that copy from. I don't know how it found out I was in Australia. Maybe that was because of my OpenAI account settings, but impressive, right? And we can see how within a year or two that we're going to be able to build websites just with a few prompts for every single page or every single element, and it's actually going to be good. So the other thing that I've seen from OpenAI this week is that the they now do really great 
translations between two different people in the one conversation. So any of the translation apps that used to be out there are no longer relevant out of business because the chat GPT, not only will you get AI to do half of the work that you do inside your business, but now you can actually travel with it, talk with people. They will talk in their language. They'll translate back to you. You provide your answer in your language. It will translate back to them and so forth. So that's just one of the examples of startups that are going to be dissolved as AI continues to progress is so many of these tools that were built on old data of like doing manual translation work is just going to be done automatically by these tools in the large language models by the big tech companies, which is both scary and exciting. It's great for the consumer, right? Because we get a lot more value for our $20 a month, but very scary because that's where all the money in the world is going to flow to these four or five companies at the top and they are just going to be gigantic, untouchable companies. But that's a future problem for you and I to think about. If we think too far into the future for about anything, we're just going to give up. So we need to stick with what is in front of us. And this week has been very exciting. I don't know about you, but for me, I kind of feel so overwhelmed with like so many possibilities and things to do that I kind of just sit here for half the day trying to figure out where what my next best steps are. But don't worry, we will get there together. So if you have enjoyed this one, please do subscribe. I've got some great content here, like how I created the content repurposing system. It goes for two and a half hours. I show you the entire tutorial of how to set up your own workflows. And those workflows are operating so much faster now. They are cheaper and they are going to be more efficient and they can just continue to get better as these models get better. So check out that video.